let me ask you a question. Is your relationship with yourself toxic or healthy? I believe the most significant relationship that you have in your life is the relationship that you have with yourself. You cannot get away from yourself. You cannot have time out from yourself. You can't even leave the room to move away from yourself like you can with other people. You are always with you. So imagine that you lived with another human being 24-7 for your whole existence. You would end up getting to know that person pretty intimately. You would get to know their strengths. You would get to know their weaknesses. You would get to know their personality really well. You would also get to know the things that grated you. And you'd experience the good, the bad, and the challenging about living with that person for 24-7. Well, let me tell you, this is the situation that you find yourself in today. It is so important that we realize that what we think about ourselves, what we feel about ourselves, has a huge effect on our life experience. What you think about you, what you tell yourself, and how you treat you will have a nurturing effect on your well being or a detrimental effect. On your well-being and so our thoughts can either nurture us or they can tear us to ourselves down so overall let me ask you this big question are you at peace within yourself can you appreciate your strengths do you even like yourself let alone do you love yourself do you like spending time alone with you or is it an unbearable thought to just be quiet with yourself? Do you like spending time uh, alone doing things that you love? Or are you always trying to fill that, fill a void or a gap or by spending time with other people or doing other things or watching movies constantly or watching Instagram? Or is there a piece that you have and experience with yourself or are you trying to avoid being with you? Overall, how we talk to ourselves has a really, really powerful effect, not only on your well-being, but then how you treat others and how you relate to God. So the big question is, do you love yourself? You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that speaks to this. When Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment of all? Over all the commandments in the Bible, what is the greatest? Jesus replied this. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And the second greatest is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. So some of us have actually been programmed to love our neighbor or love others or love everybody around us at the cost of our well-being. Some kind of twisted sacrificial love, twisted in that it is a misrepresentation of a truth that scripture lays out or that Jesus actually encouraged us and commanded us to do. So what Jesus was actually saying is this, love others as yourself, not love others instead of yourself. So the well-known saying that do to others as you would have them do unto you or similar, you can only give to others what you first have yourself. You can't give away what you don't have. These things are completely 100% true. You were created for love. When you were born, you were born lovable. You were no one is born unlovable. What happens to us is that there are layers or veils of lies and, and negative experiences that sit on top of this truth that you are lovable, that you were born to be loved. And so over time, these lies just add up and become 
something that sits on top of our true self. So to love others well, you need to begin to love yourself. To love God, you need to be able to appreciate that he first loved you. And so overall, our sense of well-being, our sense of enjoyment, our sense of fulfillment in this life comes from three main things. Our ability to have peace with God. Are you at peace with God, your creator? Are you at peace with others? Have you, do you keep short accounts with your friends and family and loved ones? And are you at peace with yourself? When I lay my head at night, down on my pillow at night, you know, I know that I have great night's sleeps. When I am at peace with God, when I'm at peace with myself, and I'm at peace with those that are significant in my life. And so my question to you is, are you at peace with yourself? Are you able to love yourself the way that you are truly designed to love? You know, when I'm not keeping short accounts with others and making sure that communication is clear or misunderstandings are corrected, and when I'm not keeping short accounts with God, you know, making sure that that channel with my creator is 100% clear, then I have issues that arise in my heart. And the same actually applies to our relationship with ourselves. If you're not making sure that you're forgiving yourself and being kind to yourself and letting things go and not beating yourself up and not rejecting and judging yourself, then issues can arise in your heart. So how do we actually respond? How can we love ourselves more? Well, the first way that we can actually begin this journey is to simply apply and practice self-compassion. Okay, let me use an example. If you've had a major setback in your life, or you know something terrible's happened, you've been fired, or there's been a failure in business, or a failure in a relationship, maybe you've experienced rejection through divorce, or, or there's been a major event that's really had an impact on your life, and you're finding it really hard to pick yourself back up uh, or bounce back, um, then you know there is two ways you can react to that. Number one is you go into self-rejection, self-flagellation, you actually start to criticize yourself. You start to, you know, really take on the, the full blame um, of yourself and you become, you know, really inward focused and hard on yourself. Or the other reaction is that you blame everybody else. You don't take any personal responsibility for that. You become defensive and judgmental of other people. So neither of those are great options. Practicing self-compassion, practicing compassion for others, this is our way forward. Loving yourself is taking responsibility for your part in any setback, any failure, but not stopping there, not getting stuck in the rut of self-judgment or, you know, uh, blame, but just allowing yourself to feel the disappointment, but then applying self-compassion. So loving yourself is saying, oh, I'm going to learn from this. Yes, I made a mistake. Yes, I'm going to learn. Yes, I'm going to grow. Um, this is a growth opportunity for me. That's self-compassion. Being kind to yourself in that it is practicing self-forgiveness. And realizing that failures and setbacks and not getting everything right is a shared human experience. There is not one person on this planet that has done life perfectly. So if we approach with compassion and go, apply self-compassion and go, I'm part of this shared human experience um, of being able to experience failure but then bounce back from it. That is applying self-compassion. And it is also the third thing, which is do not get into mindsets that stay, stay with you and become your identity. Just because you've had a failure doesn't mean to say you are a failure. Just because you have been rejected doesn't mean to say that you are now unlovable. So grabbing these, opportuni these, these opportunities to 
to reframe our experiences and not make them part of your identity is vital in practicing self-compassion. So we want to respond with kindness other than judgment. We want to um, apply compassion and recognize we've failed, but we're not a failure. And we want to take a balanced approach to our emotions. Yes, you're going to have a few days of feeling really wretched and horrible, and you're going to experience those emotions. And you're going to maybe feel remorse, but don't settle for that. Don't stay there. A practicing self-compassion is taking yourself on a journey through those emotions out to a place of buoyancy again. Your experience of life will improve when you begin to take care of you, love yourself, apply self-compassion, receive the truth that God loves you and you are inherently lovable and then be able to express that to other people, your significant others that are in your life. When I look at this subject of loving yourself, and when I look at that scripture, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself, I see the metaphor of a three-leg stool. Each leg is the three components of that scripture. Love God is one leg, love yourself is another, and love others is the third. If you take one of those legs away, that stool becomes unbalanced. And the same applies to our life. We need those three elements for our overall well-being. To be able to connect with a God that's greater than you, God your creator. To connect with yourself in an authentic and compassionate and loving way. And to connect with others. Those three things will keep you in a place of inherent well-being. <music>